My name's Hugh from the Mini Specialist, and today I'm going to talk through a problem we have with this car. This has got the 1.5 B38 engine, and it has got a drivetrain error, and basically it says here, Vanos solenoid valve exhaust camshaft jammed, and that's fault code 130304. Right, so before we get to the how-tos of this, these are the possible fault codes, and I've listed them all below for your reference. So these faults occur when the camshafts and or the vanoses fail. So that plunger is in the middle of that vanos and that plunger is in good condition. And when we look at the second one, you see the circlip, the second one, the circlip's missing. And that means that plunger is no longer secure and it'll come out. So that's a failed vanos. So the other failure point is that stator on the end of the camshaft becomes loose. And you can see that it's moving there and where the camshaft isn't moving. And that's the failure of the camshaft. Right, so let's get back onto the job in hand. So to get to this uh, and fix this problem, we've basically got to take off all of this at the back here and uh, the, the air box and so on. So I'll talk you through that. So that's the air box off. So all I do now is take this off and then these bits of plastic. So that's all that clear. Now, this scuttle here, we won't take this off. We don't need to, but we will take this off. Now, what you need is a long reach T30 what I use so basically got T30 on the end of there and reach into that there's one there there's one there and there's one there and just gently carefully they're trapped so they shouldn't come out now then then this will come loose so there's a take off this uh, fixing for the fuel. The car is a Clubman uh, and it's slightly different to the Cooper so the, we've got eight mils here to split this in two so we'll take those off. Taking that off we can now release this uh, uh, routing for these cables. On the standard hatch this is a slightly different arrangement but I'm sure it's pretty pretty much it's very easy self-expansion when you get there. Right it's a bit of a fiddle but uh, I've got that out now, so that is available and loose. We've got to do that to get this off so we can get the rocker cover off. It's quite a big job just to get the rocker cover off on this, on this car. And the acres of plastic don't help. So this is a, a noise damper insulation for uh, the fuel pump, which sits underneath there, so we can pull this off. I'm going to take this T30 out and just push that back. If you can avoid taking it off, do because like I say, it's a bit of a pain to get back. So now I've got to take off the various uh, bits on the top of the engine here, take out the uh, core packs and just remove the fuel line. Uh, and so with the loom now out of the way, we can actually get access to some of the other stuff. Now this is, I've kind of disconnected the fuel line and now I'm gonna take out the injectors. So you can see there's a connector there that'll come off only take out the larger of these screws so apply, by applying gentle pressure this whole injector rail with injectors comes out as one and you can see now you do not want to take those injectors off individually it doesn't help we're nearly in a position to get the rock cover off we've got to take off the fuel pump and we've got to disconnect these uh, vanos actuators so they are connected down there disconnect them and then they come out by pushing on them. So these need to come off before you take the rock cover off because you can damage things if you don't. But by disconnecting the electrical connector and then twisting that anti-clockwise, you should now pop out. Uh, there is a rubber seal on this, so don't lose it. If you lose it, you'll have a terrible oil leak. It does need a little bit of persuasion sometimes to come out. Just gentle, yeah, gentle. There's your rubber ring, don't lose it. I've lost them before, and then you have this dreadful oil leak down the side of the engine. So keep those together. Now with the fuel pump removed, I should be able to get to all of these Torx bolts for the rocker cover. So rocker cover comes off now. So with the rocker cover removed, we can now uh, see what we're dealing with. These are the Vanos bolts, and these seem to be in good condition. If they come out or protrude too much, then they've failed. In case that doesn't look like the one on your car, don't worry. There have been different designs. This is from uh, an earlier engine, and the stator at the end is a different design to that one. And then there's 
these, the three different designs of uh, Vanos. So a common fault on these engines is that this can move in relation to that. It doesn't appear to be the case here. It looks like our problem is the Vanos. To remove the Vanos, we've got to put a locking tool on and this particular Vanos has got a multi-spline uh, key. Um, and this is our locking tool. So I need to rotate the engine to uh, have this vertical in the right position. Now, it's a manual, so I can a little trick. I can either uh, take the road wheel off and uh, turn, the, turn the engine by hand. Um, I've taken the plugs out so the, it should rotate easily. But what I've actually done is I've lowered the car onto some uh, wooden blocks. I've put it in third, and now I'm going to rotate the road wheel. And now I can move the engine very easily. And it's a lot less hassle and uh, messing about than uh, taking the wheel off and so on. So that's our locking tool on. Uh, what I'm now going to do without taking the tensioner out is crack that nut. So I'm going to leave it all on. This is a bit of a, um, a workaround because I don't need to take the sprocket off. I just want to take the Vanos out. So I've cracked off uh, the Vanos with a bar and now I'm just uh, unscrewing it. I want to see what condition it's in. And there's our problem. The Vanos uh, gauze there has basically destroyed itself. And we're going to have to make sure there's nothing left inside the, uh, the sprocket there, but uh, changing that should fix our problem. This is our new Vanos, so I'm going to put that in and torque it up. The tightening torques for uh, the uh, Vanos or the oil control valve, so this is the one that we've got. So it's 10 Newton meters, 30 Newton meters, 50 Newton meters, and 28 degrees. If you've got any of the previous two, then the, the uh, torque settings are there. So I'm all torqued up now. I'm going to remove this, put the rock cover on and start reassembling the car. Right, so the rock cover's going on. Now I've zipped up these bolts with, with the gun. But despite that, I very much recommend torque wrenching each of these individually. The reason is, even though I've tightened that bolt with the gun to the same kind of level as all the other, as might be expected, I've set this to 12 Newton meters and I can still turn it. So because of the rubber, um, there we go, because of the rubber gasket, it's very inaccurate to uh, just rely on the gun, so torque wrench it every time. That's everything back together. Uh, that's it for today. Basically, I've cleared the faults, uh, run the car up, and we're all good. Thanks for watching.